Welcome back to Who That 242. I'm your host, Timmy. Happy 2022. I've been gone for a month, but you know, I figured you all had enough things because January you didn't see my face. Uh, we always say on this other podcast that works out the pun, can be comfortable with if you call them. And today on Who That, we have your all's favorite Bahamian slash in the States personality. <laughs> I tie tongue, so I'll make sure I, I don't, I don't want to get, I don't want to get dragged into the night. <laughs> oh, lie on me. Yes. Oh, lie on me. Yes. Hey, how are you doing? Good, I'm good. I'm to see you back in tongue, Grace, with your presence. Very excited to be here. <laughs> Very. So I think I saw I for you last year. Mm-hmm. I basically follow anyone who has a, a Bahamian flag in their bio. Yeah, same. And you right. wasn't, and you just wasn't like just a Bahamian the other day. Like you was like, Accent carrying on, you was just, you know. So I want to talk about firstly how you even get in the states. That's why I, I want to start this conversation. How you get over there? Okay, so I went to boarding school in high school first. I spent the first year in Florida, mm-hmm. and I realized we got to be further away. Family can visit. <laughs> <laughs> just too close. Oh, like, you was running from something. It defeats the purpose of being away. Like I'm like Lord, there goes my family. Half, 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 like, All right, might as well be an asshole. Yeah. Like. Um, but then I went to boarding school in West Virginia for grade 11 and 12. Mm-hmm. Then I went to college in Ohio. And then I went to law school in New York. And now I'm in New York just permanently. So law, why why law? What, what about law was always calling to um, So I always knew I was going to be a lawyer. My Grammy actually told me when I was like seven. My Grammy's like, go oh, used to walk around the house with a checklist and da 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 very, You know, baby, it's go, cool. oh, you like to argue, you like to debate, so you can be a lawyer. So I think that was the original generic reason. Um, then by the time I got to college, because I was always the plan. Um, I got to college and I guess what happened was I was, I studied a lot like African-American studies, all of this, like why I really decided I wanted to be a public defender. Um, was, well, the first thing I realized was the law is something that it constantly interacts with you. It mm-hmm. controls everything. Why they have a window in the room, whether or not you cross the street, all of that is determined by the law. Mm-hmm. But people like to treat the law like it's outside of society, like it's something enough to deal with. You know when people be like, oh, let's not talk about politics. Let's not talk about law. How you figure? Mm-hmm. How do you figure? Like it controls everything. So I always felt like, you know, if the, the law is constantly interacting with me, I want to be interacting with it. Um, I've never heard a lawyer explain that before. That's really interesting. Like, for instance, like literally everything you do, like there's a, a law, why I have to wear this over this? Yes, and, yeah. there's always a reason. Like when I, when I email my my landlord and it's like oh if, if i want to complain um that the the neighbor's making noise they ain't just that they making noise is that you in breach of my warrant habitability like i my peaceful covenant like i know what i know what it is like because it's always something dictating it that way so that's why that was the generic re- like the the evolved reason as to why i wanted to be a lawyer and then specifically why i wanted to be a public defender was i was writing my thesis um my thesis was called colored bodies matter the relationship between our bodies power and pain and my thesis advisor uh, called me a gap scholar, affectionately, but a gap scholar is someone who identifies problems in academia. Like, they tell you, this is fucked up, uh, this is messed up, but they don't necessarily you tell you. Right. Don't, you oh, I can guess? Oh, thank God. Yeah. Um, but they tell you this is messed up, but they don't tell you how to fix it, right? Mm-hmm. This is just, but that's a valuable, valuable thing in academia. But at the time, you know, the for, uh, the protests in Ferguson were happening, and I remember feeling like, you know what? In a criminal system, like we are disproportionately represented, black people in the criminal system, like overwhelmingly. Um, and we make up less than five percent of the legal profession. It didn't feel sufficient for me to just be a gap scholar. Someone that like, oh, in academia, that's what I do, or or worse. In in my case, it's like, you know, because I'm a black lawyer, then that's some kind of win on a symbolic level that doesn't do anything for us substantively. So from there I was like, I gotta be a public defender. I gotta I gotta be I got to be in court because I think it makes a difference. I think the whole criminal system is dehumanizing from start to finish. It's not just if you get convicted or if you get killed or something like that. It's from the jump of just being criminalized like that. So I think when people are represented by somebody that looks like them and I'm going to humanize you and I'm going to get you and I'm going to tell you a story and I'm going to tell you you're not a bad guy and I'm going to understand, I think that makes like a real difference. A, a name in the paper and they have to just go deal with it. Yeah, exactly. And I think that makes a difference. And it does. Like my clients and my clients generally really, really like me. And so that's why. That's why. And how long have you been a lawyer? Three years. Three years. So it's been so relatively new. So he's like, yeah. you've been in this forever. Three I years. mean, I've represented like 800 people. Jeez. So it depends you, do, on how you, you think about it. Do you find it hard to get on a personal level with each single one? Or is it still coming easy to you? Um, Like to connect with them yeah. initially? Yeah. No, I I Actually, I'm a pretty per. I think that's one of my strengths as an attorney. I think um, there are a lot of ways. I think a lot of people find the job challenging on a day to day basis that I don't, mm-hmm. just because me and the clients like that's the best part of the job. Like people hate arraignment, hate arraignments. I love arraignments. Like I got to go meet the client, talk to the client, chop it up. Like we, we always like. I'm very good at connecting on that level. I actually had a. Um, 
a former supervisor that didn't like me um, say it negatively. She was like, oh, well, Lani's more social worker than lawyer because my clients, I'm like, well, my clients feel loved, okay? <laughs> they feel loved and they don't go to jail, so ask somebody about that. Like, I would ask you if you could talk about just like your type of success rate, like what you could tell the success, like how, what, how do you feel like your work has been in the three years? How do you feel like you've made a difference? However, it hasn't been where I'm just like, I don't know if I can keep doing this because too many people go to jail. I, just, I want to know your general overview. Um, I think, well, first of all, I think, uh, how you look at success, you know, as a public defender changes on a, like a day-to-day -day level. Cause people will think, let me give you a perfect example. You think of it like I got somebody out of jail and you think that feels really rewarding, but it really doesn't in the grand scheme of the picture. Because if I get my clients out of jail, but they're homeless, you know what I mean? Mm. How good do I feel? If I get my clients out of jail, but it's an order of protection that says they can't go back to their house. So now, you know, or now they have an ACS problem. They have this, all these cases. They've lost their job. Like so many collateral consequences happen that it's hard to really feel successful and rewarding in that way but for me it depends on where you put your value system for me i didn't come into the job thinking that we're doing god's work are we gonna no we're cogs in the system at the very most we're harm reductionists we are not we are not god saviors by any means and i don't look at the job like that that's not what I th i'm thinking of i look at the job like can how much how much am i able to stop a bad psychological impact of if you were represented by somebody else you know what i mean you know what you would go through in the system like i recognize that a lot of the times let me give you a perfect example. Public defenders are blamed for a lot of what happens in the system, mm -hmm. which is mostly the judges, the law, the prosecutor, right? But that's because the person you interact most with is, is, is the public defender. That's the lawyer. That's the person that you're dealing with. And a lot of how you feel and you're going to come out feeling the system is going to be based on those interactions and what was able to be said, not said, done. So for me, it's a, if I could get you an arraignment, by the time I by the time I meet you at arraignment, something fucked up has already happened to you, okay? You've already been yeah, arrested. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're already in the throes of going through something and feeling a way about just or whatever if i could get you right then and nip that in the bud and me figure out a different game plan and i can make you feel really really supported that for me is what matters like most of my clients like when i get letters and stuff from my clients it's usually how i made my clients feel because you could be the best lawyer but if your client don't have faith in you they're not gonna think so right like you know what i mean they don't they just don't trust what you're saying like they don't they don't believe it if you tell them take this plea versus that it, but they don't talk to you. They don't have a relationship with you. They don't trust you. They don't think you're a good lawyer. They're not mm -hmm. saying that. So my clients, for me, is in making my client feel really, really supported. So that's where I find it rewarding. But also, though, I am a good lawyer for my clients. Yeah, and my clients. <laughs> like, yeah, but just, you know. Um, and also, I get to do a lot of that work outside of court. Because there are a lot of people's cases that I just bring light to. I put a lot of attention to and stuff. And things happen for them. Like, I talk to... Um, Lakeith Smith, I regularly talk about his case. It was um, a 15-year-old that was sentenced. Was, was it the guy who was sentenced, who sentenced to death? Felony, no. Sentenced on felony murder. His uh, When he was 15, him and his friend uh, committed a robbery, and the police shot and killed his friend, and then they charged him with felony murder and put him in jail for 75 years. Yeah, exactly. And um, that's a case that I like. I talked about that went pretty viral. And he, like, he, his family themselves reached out, like, thank you, we're able to get a lawyer and stuff like that. So I, can do, I do a lot of... I think I'm able to make a lot of change in and outside of court. Look. When did you realize that, um, like I thought you probably in the game, when did you realize that you could use, first of all, how do you get so much followers? Like what, what was the, <laughs> other than being, you know, being men, beautiful, these type of things, what was it that got you the most followers? Like what was, when did you decide, I guess I'm using my platform to bring like, you know, I didn't decide. It actually happened pretty, pretty organically, legitimately. I think, um, I, so I had never really been on, I'd use Twitter, um, just to like, watch my live, eat my shows, you know, mm -hmm. loving hip hop. Like yeah, I'm not yeah. on Twitter, but, um, Cuomo was pissing me to fuck off. Um, uh, fucking with bail reform at the top of the pandemic, which you, you fuck with my job. Yeah, um, yeah. and you know, making things harder. And, um, my job kind of said it to us, like, you know, tweeted, like we could talk about, you know, and I was like, yeah, you know what I mean? Let me say something. Mm -hmm. And then at the time I'm, I'm a legal observer. So I go to the protests as, um, the protests in New York city, like all of the protests. I mean, they go there as an observer to make sure I didn't watch what the police are doing. So if they mm. arrest people, help people, help them with their cases, right? So that's what I'm there doing. So I was going to a lot of um, a lot of the protests, and I'm just somebody you see. I speak. I speak. I just. Yeah. I. I pretty much just was doing what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and it just happened. And then um, people pick it up and such. And then um, I think um, as far as everything else, I had uh, one of the first police brutality cases in New York City following George Floyd. Um, after George Floyd was killed, they passed a say their name reform bill package, which really just did a bunch of nothing because it's like, oh, we're going to make it illegal to kneel on people's necks, um, which was already illegal in, since 1993. Yeah. But okay. Um, so anyway, I had the first one of the first cases following that, Sir Carlisle Arnold, when that happened in January of 2021. So when that happened, uh, I was doing a lot of media on that case, like fighting that case. Um, I am 
out in the media, essentially. <laughs> and I think they put me on. They put me on something and Boom. people, yeah, yeah, just it just kept happening. <laughs> I saw you was a lot. I don't know. Is it a specific particular show? But every time I always see you, like you was talking for like five minutes. Is that is that one particular show, or you always a bunch of them always talking? Uh which one? Oh, I, I'm, no, I've been on a bunch of stuff. Yeah, because because like every other week I see you just like they. It's like a five minute clip of you just giving your opinion. So oh, um, you thinking of the hill or like what, what it looks like? So it's, it's like a zoom, like like four, four squares. So White guys, squares. Yeah, yeah, white people around me. Yeah, yeah. that's the hill. Okay. <laughs> like um, yeah, no, give my opinion. No, shall I be around with me? <laughs> I wish. I wish they just let me go get my little monologue and be like, let me be out. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, that's the hill that happened recently, actually. I was on um, the Bad Faith podcast, which is Rihanna Joy Gray, Bernie Sanders, former press secretary, mm -hmm. her podcast talking about Rittenhouse. All the right wing people on YouTube lost their fucking minds. Oh, they, <laughs> oh, listen. I was like, they listen, they were in, that was the first time, like, I feel like I was really exposed to the right on a, like, a large scale. Mm -hmm. And child, they hate me. Um, but I was like, and it was so funny because in my mind, to me, I'm cracking jokes. Yeah, like, like you, that you might hold the bad thing. getting off, yeah. I'm thinking I'm giving y'all, first of all, I'm niece, I'm dying, right? Like, I'm like, first of all, I don't, let me just be clear, I don't even care. Like, you know, I, I like nothing about what happened in Renounce is surprising to me yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. You know, the reality is you go on things, they, this is what they chose the topic. You're mm -hmm. talk, talking about, so it's like when these people are mad as hell, like I'm the, I'm the like mayor of anti <laughs> I don't give a fuck about Kyle Rittenhouse. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a goddamn. Yeah. I'm sick of talking about him actually. Yeah. So at that point, I'm, I'm getting my jokes off. I'm like, you, you want jokes? Bars. You want bars. this? Like, yeah. I'm like, you want this serious, he, boring he be, ass? He could be behind you. Just yeah. bars. <laughs> I'm saying, so in my mind, I come in there expecting everybody in there to recognize my comedy stylings, my comedic genius, and they end up like, fuck this bitch, she don't know nothing, she clearly wants to do I'm like, oh my god, oh fuck. <laughs> I was so Body, body blow, it's like, what's I was, this? I was, I was like, shocked, I was like, like, god, they really hate my black ass? I was like, okay, wow. I was like, wow, I never like, I was like, whew. That's powerful. And then they hated my black ass right on to more, 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 more shit. That's yeah. what happened. So then after that, I went on the hill and I, yeah. um, to talk about Rittenhouse. That was the first, the first one y'all seeing. Um, and I've been on more and, and I'm pretty much, I'm on the long crime network, like usually like twice a week. So. Okay. Yeah. I, oh, that, that's too. I, I yeah. The long well. crime. And I tend so to what's do that? Is that like a, show a lot. What's the point of long crime? Is, is it like long crime network follows trials. They mm -hmm. follow like all the big trials, all okay. the salacious trials around the country. So you watch the trials, um, and they have like different analysts come and you on. Give and you give your, you give your analysts. Yeah, that yeah. Legal analysts. Okay. Excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, yeah I'm getting my jokes off also. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I do that like twice a week. So I do a lot of that, and I do the Benjamin Dixon show a lot. Um, there in Atlanta, I love them. You, do you think of starting your own part, or you think you're dying for that? I I think I think of. Listen, I want somebody to give me. I don't want somebody to just come to me and say, hey. Here's the infrastructure. You know what I mean? Just like, do it. Okay, yeah, yeah, I want someone to come, come give me. Come give me. Give come me give me. I'm like, all you all know to come put me on there. Everybody's figured that out. Let's just go one step further. Come on, give me my own shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I can choose I the speak, I speak it in, the, in existence. Yeah. Like, come in. Someone, yes. someone can see this and be like, oh, she she wants a part. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, no, I want one. Give me one. I'm like, give me one. Let me let me choose the topics. Let me choose the topics. Mm -hmm. Listen, oh, that's that's going to that's gonna be the day. When I get to so just, just give me one. Give me one thing that you really want to talk about that. That you probably what heard. I really want to talk about? Yeah. Oh no, Timmy, you can't ask me that. My head is gonna be in the right. No, like not, you know, no, I'm in you, vacation. You can't, you I'm, can't vacation. Find right I'm not even an intellectual oh, right oh, now. Oh, 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 you, you said, oh, you're super give me serious. something to talk about, and I got oh, this ridiculous like great super... baby mother. <laughs> like, oh, like, do you think she's ugly? I don't think people think she. I don't think she's ugly. You think she's ugly? Well, she, I'm sure it's fat. Yeah, I mean, I face like a little weird, but I think she's ugly. You know, her ass is so fat. <laughs> like, I mean, listen, you know, like she's. I think you know what? I think. She doesn't have the conventional, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, the nose, yeah. like people aren't usually into that or whatever, but it, I think it's in a quiet face. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And again, if your ass fat enough, I mean, I don't like women and I know that ass is fat. So <laughs> yeah. clearly it's Someone doing something. Someone you know? Yes, yeah, it's saying. It was such a guess. Me, like everybody else, where we grew up watching like Law and Order, and this is how it would have shaped the minds of how people think Carlos yes. is. And I was, I've always seen these topics about how like people like Dick Wolf and all these shows have made police seem so glorious. So talk to me about the comparison of what actually happens and what something like Law and Order and all those shows like 
Portrayed. I mean, all those shows are full of shit. Um, all of them. All of, all of those shows are just absolutely full of shit. First of all, the average thing in the criminal system is just not salacious and exciting. Yeah. If I have 400 case files in my head and you was to go through them, it's, it's regular stuff. Like, if I curse you out, right, this is the kind of thing you get arrested for in the States right now to me. If I curse you right fucking out, you be like, don't fucking play with me. Ba, 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 ta, 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 da, 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 da. You call the police? Girl, aggravated harassment, medicine in the third degree. I agree. Aggravated harassment. Listen to me. I promise. Listen to me. Listen to me. If we Bahamians, every Bahamian would be locked the fuck up. <laughs> every, ba listen to me. When I first, re I called my mommy, like my first arraignment trip, has you been fucking jailed? Like, I've been jailed, <laughs> jail, jail. I just called my mommy after every arraignment trip just to tell her she'd be in jail. Jail. Like I have, I, one time I represent, um, I represented this woman. They arrested her, charged her with, um, menacing, menacing in the third degree and aggravated harassment in the third degree. You know what, for why? Some get, while she was in labor, some chick or whatever was texting her, like, trying to find her. She was a girl, don't, something, something essentially the American equivalent of, girl, don't fucking play with me. Yeah. Hang on, arrest this moment. Why just pregnant? had a baby. Just had a baby. baby, bring it. And I was like, at that moment, you don't understand, it had never occurred to me you could get locked up for cursing people. Think about that. That's a crazy place to live. Because we especially cursing like, people all out. The time? Are you serious? I... <laughs> cursing. I saw someone out. on the news yesterday, last week, where this guy, um, someone cut him off, and he started shooting. She didn't even put it on the window. He started shooting. <laughs> it's like wait, people are crazy. I cursed somebody out on the hill coming up here because they was dilly dallying in front of me. I said, "Go, you ain't got somewhere to be." Yeah. Like, it's crazy. No, so the average thing is just, first of all, it's just not It's just not serious. It's just not what it is. It's a lot of criminalized poverty. It's a lot of criminalizing, like, family disputes. The amount of family disputes is family just arguing with each other, siblings fighting, mummies and her sons, all kind of normal things. Mm -hmm. They got them in court or, like, petty thefts and stuff like that. But you don't get, like, truly, like, no, that's not what it is. Those, triple, are, triple one, those are one in a million yeah. cases. But, yeah, yeah that's, all, that's all the media makes it to, out to be. But it's, it's lots of ways Law and Order and those shows have set up the criminal system to give people this false idea. Like, it's, think about how much in that show you'll see, especially in early Law and Order, it's like they'll show white people a lot as defendants. So you think that you have this balanced system. Do you yeah. know how little white people you actually see in I the criminal like court? I have represented, I checked the numbers the other day, I represented over 777 people. If I've represented, I, I I have not represented fifty white people. Damn. Like I have not, and I know, and I, and I I know it, and I know it because all my white clients stand out of my mind because they're pains in the asses because they be so shocked that they end the criminals. They can't believe it. They call you every Lock me up every day. Me? I just have this one client. Oh my god, they call me every day, just going. So someone can just lie on me and I can get locked. Yes, it happened. Welcome, welcome to my life. Welcome. Yes, it be. I know that's crazy, right? You should talk to somebody about this. <laughs> like, it's it's oh, that's, nuts. That's, that's wild. It's nuts. The cognitive dissonance on white people in the criminal system is so palpable. Because at one time I ran into a white person I'd represented before, and they like talked about my clients, like me being in court, but, like they were separate. And, I like I represented them, mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. they, them, they, <laughs> and they talking about my clients like some. Criminal hooligan separate apart from them, like like nigga, I I represented you. <laughs> I, I, you. <laughs> like I'm telling you, it's really it's really crazy, but it just it just isn't what it it just isn't what it is. It just is. I think you think when you know what it is. People have a lot of faith in the world, right? They think if something is truly outrageous, something is truly heinous, and we know about it, then obviously something would be done. Mm -hmm. So they think you're being hyperbolic. They, that's what they think. When you tell them the criminal system is racist, the criminal system is, you know, built this way intentionally, they think it's something that you have to, like, parse out with a magnifying glass. Like, you need to just... Yeah, yeah, the fuck yeah they, they, the they think it's something really insidious. But in reality, you go into court, it's plain as fucking day. It's plain as day. I mean, it's the clearest thing ever. I, I, I represented once, and I always, I always think back to this. Because I remember feeling like I'm in the upside down, which is how I feel a lot. Trying to change your things. Yeah, true. listen. <laughs> so we, um, I represent, I represent um, this black guy, and he had like a joint. Like they found him like one joint. This was before they legalized weed. Um, but they found him like one joint, and the, the 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 prosecution asked for like thousands of dollars of bail, right? Thousands of dollars of bail because of one joint. Immediately represented a white guy found with a bunch of drugs. Clearly, is a dealer. You know what I mean? Bunch of drugs consented to release. Right after, like directly, like directly after, same judge, same prosecutor, and everybody just, and you know you, listen, you know a system is fucked up when people do that in your face. Like, they play in your face, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. just, it's like, this everybody just, like, just, is this real? I'm like, uh, uh, and that shit happens a lot, you know what I mean? It's a lot, it's a different ball game when you have a white client. I'm like, I mean, a different ball game entirely. So, 
it just is playing. So for me, it's that's what it really boils down to. I'm like, the system is real fucked up, and I got to tell you all about it every day. <laughs> every day. I can tell you, I, listen, I got to make sure you see it somehow. I got to figure out a different way to make you understand this shit. this shit is fucked up. Yeah, it's yeah. fucked up. And it's just not all right. But the other things I see about too is like the, the prison situation. Rikers. Yeah, Rikers. Talk to me about like about that. Oh, uh, listen. So, <laughs> first of all, I just always have to say this. People have this idea of Rikers because I think Rikers Movies. is infamous in a way, especially yeah. when like Lil Wayne went to Rikers yeah. and you mentioned him. People think Rikers is just like the prison for terrible people, this big, bad, infamous prison. Yeah. Rikers is a pretrial detention center. Wow. People in Rikers have not been convicted of a crime. They are there because they cannot afford bail or they have been remanded. And that is fucking insane. Because think about this. Think about the kinds of things I just told you they can arrest people for. Like they arrest poor people for it, and then they send you to Rikers. Think about this place. Like, this terrible place. You know all kind of unspeakable shit happened. 16 people have died in Rikers in the last year. Wow. And, like, a, for bullshit. For bullshit. And it's like, this is my problem and how I feel the need to shine a magnifying glass in this. Even the way so much of how the system is set up is deliberate, right? There's a reason why prisons are, are built and put separate apart. They're put far away, so it's hard to get there. So you don't see it. So, so, so you don't see it. Mm -hmm. And so you don't see it. So you forget it. So you think that the people there are other. They are different. They are this, this, this is a sect of people this cannot happen to. And no, I need you to understand. No, it can happen to you. And if you are black and you in New York, it is likely to happen to you. And that should fucking concern us, right? So for me... I got to talk about this, right? They have, like, Rikers has, like, $860 million is put towards their budget. Jesus. NYPD, they have 36,000 officers. They have an $11.3 billion budget. Billion. That's and insane. another $860 million devoted to Rikers alone. Alone, yeah, that's insane. To put in poor people in jail. To put in, like, you have to understand that. I, for people to be represented by a public defender, which the, the vast majority of everybody in the criminal system is, they have to be dirt Dirt poor, like no money, you know. Listen, I am a proud broke bitch, and I I would not qualify for my services. They would say I make way too much money, and I cannot afford a lawyer. Wow. I cannot afford a lawyer. I cannot afford my services. Um, so understand how poor your clients have to be, and they take these people. Think about it. The state is the one. They they're aware that they're poor. They're the one that have just assigned you need a public defender because you're poor. And in the same breath that they say you are you are too poor to have a lawyer, we have to give you a thing. We say we're gonna set this bail on you at this price, so you can't that get you, out. Of course, you can't pay. Exactly, and that's exactly all it is. Is legitimized slavery. That's all it is. Is legally sanctioned and slavery. My eyes didn't really open that until um Ava's thing um Thirteenth Amendment. Mm -hmm. like, oh my god, this it, is this is ridiculous. Exactly. It's this really is, fucked this up. This is ridiculous. It's fucked up. It's really, it's really, really fucked up. So I think that one other thing I think. So let's get to the other stuff. The, <laughs> the ether beat. The, the <laughs> fuck. The, oh. <laughs> when? Well, how did you ever f feel like it was a uh, conflict of interest to be like this big bad lawyer and still show your full personality on social media, or do your bosses like enable you, or they don't really don't know? Yeah. Um, well, first they just leave me to my own devices. Yeah. My my job don't bother me. Um, they, in fact, they just read, they retweet, um, <laughs> they follow me, like, I get a lot of support, um, institutionally in that way. Um, but as far as, honestly, I don't have the energy to, like, I don't have the energy to lie. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm a very transparent person because I just, quite frankly, don't give a fuck what nobody else thinks. Like, mm -hmm. in my mind, the way I see it is, and I, and this is how come I'm, like, a compassionate person, I care about other people, is because I am the star of my fucking life. I'm mm -hmm. the star player. I'm the star of this movie. It don't matter if I'm the intern, then this is a movie about the intern, mm -hmm. right? Like, I'm the star. In the same way, I respect that other people are the star of their own shit, too, and mm -hmm. I give them the grace of people that are moving, you know, like that. For that reason... What I look like giving a fuck with the extras and stuff in my movie you have to say about me. Like, yeah. you don't get the dignity. I, I am the main character. Yeah, like, I'm the main character, and I've already come to terms with all my choices. Like, I've thought about this. When I'm an old lady, what I'm going to be comfortable with, what I like, what I value, where my value system is. And I'm very good with being, like, a full person or being a transparent person. And also, I want to make it easier for, for black women coming up after me. Like, you know, I didn't think when when a lot of law students and stuff started following me, at first I was like, I don't understand what the hype is. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. get it. And then yeah. I thought, and then my friends pointed out to me, like, well, you know any other lawyers like you? And then yeah. I was like, I guess I don't. Yeah. I guess I don't. And, you know, not having that, coming up, like, the other kinds of lawyers, they all are trying to, like, everybody trying to Olivia Pope you to death. You know what I mean? Like, they trying to, there's only one way to be. And I realized that, like, I just, that's not me. I can't do it. Like, I'm just unable. I'm an extroverted person. I'm real theatrical. I'm animated just by virtue, I guess. Um, I already have the kind of body that people are naturally going to hypersexualize no matter what, like, what I do about it. And I just was like, you know what? 
all this. This shit is real stressful. I can't do it. Like I really, I'm not capable. I tried. Like when I on my first when I first went into my job illegally, my first day, like being a public defender, I was like, I'm gonna be my. I want to be a wolf. I want to listen. I want to be. I wanted to be an introvert so bad in this life. Y'all have no idea because people don't fuck with introverts. They ain't worry about you when you are this person. People don't want your business, and I hate to be perceived. <laughs> like, um, but I was like, okay, I'm gonna be quiet. I'm gonna be reserved and be all of this. One time, I, I had my um, my boy Royce, one of my coworkers, he was like, oh, I didn't know what room to go to, but I just I just followed the sound of Lami's voice in the hallway. <laughs> and, I was like, and I was like, damn, this is my reserved me? I was like, damn, well, then I, I was like, I guess this is, yeah, fuck it. I was like, fuck I can't it. pull it off, so yeah, I might yeah. as well just be on my own shit, and yeah. that's just who I am. So I just kind of just, I just lean into, I just do my own thing. That's pretty much what it is. I'm like, yeah, I just cry. Like, first of all, I like jokes. I like uh, that's the behavior to me. I live for foolishness. I mm. love jokes, and I just be crack joke. I can look for any opportunity to get my jokes off. That's all I would do. So, I just want to know if you just be practicing, like, because you was do this, the facial expressions in the eyes. When you used to do these bots, you practice or just as common? You, know, you know what's funny? <laughs> my sister doing is say my my sister doing works. Um, she be in like PMH and uh, and she always say people would come up and show her the videos, and she'd be like. That's how I can always talk. Like I don't know even the joke. Like <laughs> she's like, and I'm like. I actually did not re <laughs> believe it or not. I didn't realize I was as um, animated as I am until like people other people yeah. started telling me, and like I seen him I like having to see Who myself. Oh, you were talking! But <laughs> I realized that now I finally see why people have always thought I'm. So I was. Like, I never got it. Like I'm not extra to me, you know. Yeah, in yeah. my mind, I'm yeah. not OD at all. Like I don't. And then I realized when I saw like oh. Um, I thought I had control of like my facial expressions and stuff, and then oh, I just no. saw like all the time on the news and I like, see myself in the news like wreck serious shit, and like I still and I'm like oh that's what they mean this yeah okay this is the you are so no I said this is no, who are you talking that's literally who? just how I carry on even on the news like yeah. I can't even help it I be leaned into I just don't. Dra drama. I guess I am the drama. Like I realized, I was like, my friend. You did, you did together as a child, no? No. And funny enough, I wanted, I wanted to, um, I wanted to act. One time, I told my parents like I wanted to be an actress, but my daddy is an Adrian man, and my mommy very serious. You, you could be a doctor, a lawyer, someone else, and I don't even know what someone else is. And all my sisters <laughs> have to do mad. Like, I'm telling you, they don't play that. Uh, I was asked, is the name of like, a, is it meaning? Is it your name? Uh, affluence befits me. Affluence befits me. Right, yeah, my daddy thought it was popping in my mind. I'm like, you know, affluence befits anybody. Like, you know, <laughs> money befits anybody. Nice shit befits. Do I have it? Why can you say affluence befits me and I can have it too? Because. <laughs> as a middle name. Uh, right? yeah, and I can have it. And I can have it. I got my broke bitch job. Like, I'm like, okay. So, yeah, that's what it means. And I also so. like to see the, 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 the tears of your mom. Like, oh, I, listen. I, 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 I was, you want to tell you it was a NASA? Listen, I, I, listen, I, 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 I taught a tax law. Like, I, I taught, listen, but I was, I, I, it slipped my mind. I, I told her I was coming. I was texting her, like, I told her my plane like, took off and all of that. I just, I forgot that I landed tax. That's all. I forgot that I landed. Yeah, so, uh, we saw this minutes ago. Yo, my one good child, you couldn't, you couldn't even tell me you're a NASA? Listen, I did my, I, I can do better. I'm gonna do better. I I, I did my best, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna do better. And speaking about home, I think you were featuring a couple of panels for the last election. Yes. How how often do you try to be? And you got like a lot going on in New York. Yeah. And America, all this type of stuff. But how often do you try to be involved with down here with stuff that's going on? Or, or is that not your ministry? I make well it's two things. So I make I make it a point to if I'm asked to do things um, for Bahamians, I always say yeah. I'm not gonna be one of those Bahamians. Yeah. Like, I, I refuse. <laughs> I refuse to be. I listen. I that is one of my my greatest, I'm not gonna get cats living one of those babies that go yeah. abroad and start not claiming I, acting I, funny. I, I can run yeah, that's why I only have one flag in my bio. I didn't even get y'all didn't get me in trouble. Like, <laughs> you know? okay, so I always say yeah. Um, so I'm, I always say yeah. But as far as uh, discussing payments, I'm very conscious of the fact that I have a, a loud voice. I, I'm, a, I'm loud just as a person, right? And on top of that, I already have a platform. And there are behemoths that are far more informed than me and that are like, do this. Behemoths that are into payment politics and know what's happening, they are informed, they educate in ways that I'm not, I'm not qualified. So I shut my fucking mouth. You know what I mean? I will retweet like when Chris and, you know, whoever talking, I see it, I will retweet yeah, yeah. Denzel talking, I will retweet their things and I'll boost it. Um, But I, I don't want to take up that space in the room because I shouldn't. I'm mm -hmm. not qualified to do it. And I will automatically, just by virtue of already having a platform, be given a credence that I don't deserve because mm -hmm. I'm not the most qualified voice yeah. there. So I boost. But mm -hmm. when they ask me to participate, yeah, ask me I, show I, up, I, I, I always say yeah. I always say yes. I'm like, yes, I, I can show up because I got brand new. My grandma would roll on a grave. <laughs> like, 
And one thing I was just trying to remember is one thing you 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 have, you have a strong view on like how you've been there your whole life and so yeah. much issues for you become permanent or like uh, yes. uh, talk to me about how that how, how difficult that's been or is it getting better or is it that like a pain is, in the ass? That's a pain in the ass. That's an eternal pain in the ass. Let me tell you something. I wish I could see how much years of my life had shaving off. Um, I always said it like I can't wait when I'm an old lady. There's a factor all the time that was wasted just letting the um, U.S. immigration stress me the fuck out. Um, yeah, no, I have a work visa. I have a work visa, and, and listen, in many ways, I'm very blessed. Even have that much, we all know how hard it even mm-hmm. is. It's just that, yeah. very hard. It's a constant, constant battle. Um, you know, I trust that something will work out. That we gonna, we gonna figure out a more. Man, man, find you and put them... No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> No, lots of men wanted to marry me. I just want to see your reaction. I just want to see your reaction. Listen, lots, lots of men wanted to marry me, uh, would like to marry me. I just, um, listen, I recognize that more than likely when I get citizenship, it'll probably be because I because I got married, but not, mm. I'm, I refuse to get married for citizenship. Yeah, of course, of course. Like, yeah. I just can't. And like, on principle, mm. I feel like America has been able to dictate and control my life in so many ways. I refuse to give it that. Like, if, as... As we've seen, I'm somebody I really like to be in command of my personal narrative. Like, my choices are my choices. What I want to do, I want to own those things. I ain't doing shit like that or whatever. Because I just don't like the concept of explaining no shit. I'm not really fucking with Like, the idea, like, when people are like, oh, you just get married and this and you marry your friend. Do that. I'm like, I literally don't like to explain shit like that. The idea I meet a man and I got to say, oh, I in this situation and blah, blah, blah. And this thing happened. I don't like And I don't like the idea of it on my personal resume. I got a lot of blemishes and shit on my personal resume. But at least I put that shit there. At least mm. it's on, you know, I own that yeah. choice in some way. Yeah. But I'm not going to do it. Like, I, just, I can't. I can't. And also, I just don't want to. Mm. The concept of a man in my house all day, every day. Right now, like the lives, the lives don't allow for. Sometimes I like, oh, listen. Sometimes Raheem, and sometimes I sit in the hallway for fifteen minutes on the stairs before I go in the apartment because I'm ready to hear Raheem scream at me. I, I just be like, oh, as soon as I get in the door, I be like, please, please, Raheem, please, please, let me get situated, please. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> Imagine like. So you ever ready for a, a, a man? Like, that was a child. Not full time <laughs> in my house, right? You know, you say child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 me teenage pregnant oh, oh. No, I, oh, 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 I am not qualified <laughs> I can put the baby I can put the crib next to the dream little box <laughs> child oh my god oh Jesus like child please some of my plans I don't know what happened to them right now <laughs> like, oh my god oh my god and the concept of having a, listen oh my god I having a baby for some man I'm not, I'm done dealing with is the sickest shit. Talk about some sick shit. Like, listen, you know how when when people have a pet with a significant other and then they break up and then they delude themselves into believing that they're gonna share, yeah, the share pet. Pet. but after a while that stops because you know it's fucking abnormal to be broken up with this person. Like you and this person are broken the fuck up, but you're going over there for trying a to see the pet and like, animal. It ain't no, it ain't no less crazy with these motherfucking children. Shut the fuck up. 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 the concept of still dealing with a man from season three of my life is crazy, you know, because maybe my life is a show. I, I, I wish you, you I wish you. Listen, that's nuts. That's fucking nuts. And I got to deal with him because this whole fucking offspring in this house looking like him, hacking like him, talking about him, reminding me about him. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. I I rather dead. I can't do it. That's the crit. Listen to me. I think about that all the time. Like, whoo! I just be looking at people who like, whoo! You build strong. Like, you build strong. You don't, you don't got, yes, you don't get that. Listen, not the, listen. My parents married, and the amount of times my mommy doesn't look at me like she's sick of my ass because that's my daddy job. Like, like, <laughs> like a harumph. No, ain't no way. Ain't no way. Listen, I give you that baby. Listen, if you want, because if I had your baby, if you wanted that, come, 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 come. Come, come, come. You ain't with me. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You don't have to be with me because life moves on. I can get an ex to it. That's for sure. Hell. Keep it this, you wanted this. You wanted this baby? You. This, this, you wanted this baby. This, this your baby. Take your baby. Come with your body. Yes. Come take your baby. Come with your body. Listen. What? Listen. Nope. Come on, my. Who put that down? That's another. Listen. You want to talk about that? You want to talk about those cra- crazy pregnancy is for true? Listen. Okay. Uh, First of all. The whole concept. I remember when I first decided pregnancy was the sickest shit I ever thought about it. I was watching Juno. And it was, I was picturing it's 2008. I'm watching Juno, and Juno's going to the abortion clinic to go have an abortion. And the, and the little Asian girl with the, with the sign outside of the abortion clinic be like, like, your baby has fingernails. And Juno goes home, and for whatever reason, 
that information, she was like, wow, my baby has fingernails. Like, I can't do it. And I was like, oh my fucking God, that alien inside you is fucking fingering it. <laughs> like, oh, that's scary. <laughs> Yo, like, have you ever thought about it? This is your body. Like, like so much scary shit that we're just told to accept as normal. And like, and let me tell you the nose, because man, think about how crazy it would be. Think about how crazy mm. it would seem to you if you was, you all of your life just been your body. It's just you, just your one body. You laying down. Because you decided to fuck one gal one time. Just punch, some kick punch, you, punch you, some kick you, punch. some some move inside you, some that fingernails back. Like you realize, babies have one goal, and it's to get the fuck out of you, no matter what. Mm -hmm. No matter what, they'll kill you to do it. <laughs> they will kill you to do it. Like, some like, shit. like alien brother. Somebody come inside you and now something is growing inside you with no other goal than to tear its way the fuck out <laughs> and cost you money forever. Uh, the devil is alive. I'm sorry, that's a very serious choice. So I say all that to say I'm not qualified to be anybody's mother right now. Raheem is Raheem is about just enough. You see, you uh, can't I got a neurosis. I, I can't be having I no baby. I understand. Thank you. We got it. So what else can we Expect from this year, other than like the normal shit you do. Like, is there anything special products you want to come out? Like, because clearly, like I said, the last year you've amassed is quite following for yes. for serious stuff and for jokes. So yes. that's why I told you you should do a podcast. I feel like you have the right, you have the eyes on you, and you have yeah the right I'm, content you want to talk about. I'm sure it's coming. I have um, let's see, what can I what can I talk about? I'm I have more op eds and things that are gonna come out. Um, I obviously, I have a million, a million different like interviews and appearances and stuff coming up. The minute I get back to, um, New they, York, they waiting for you. Listen, and no, and nobody respects my vacation. Nobody, every day, I see you on vacation, but I'm I can like, do a little thing. Exactly. You can't so many. No, I won't. I, 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 I'm like, you only give me this. Just give me this, please. <laughs> like, can I have this? Um, so I have that. I obviously, um, in the midst of a uh, protest that we are planning, the Black Attorneys of the Legal Aid Society with uh, Color of Change, it'll be at the end of Black History Month at Rikers. Um, it's my grandchild. Um, nice. So we're doing that. Let me see what else I could talk about. Um, tanks, just tanks. Yeah, I have a, I have a, you know, both, mm, both been busy, both been busy. That's you you know. see it, but it's just not as cute as you think it is. Link, link in the bio. Is it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> Miss Lauren on everything. Um, but yeah, I have, I have a lot of stuff coming up. Like I, I'm, I'm what I'm really excited about is for my website. <laughs> when when that's oh, done, have a website. I'm yes, have a website yeah. coming up. So I'm working on a website so I can put all this stuff I in like one a, place. I like a, and turn cameraman and follow you around. I really think like what you're doing, like just not yeah. even the talking shit, like the actual stuff that you focus on. Yeah, like I think yes. No, someone should be tell your story of what you I, I, sh I should I should figure something out like Fire, that. Fire out. Yeah, yeah. Someone who won't care for you around the camera. I think like shit like the protests and stuff like that got some yeah. stuff. And not for like bragging purposes. This, this shit needs to, to be cap, documented. Yeah, and show it. No, you're absolutely correct. And honestly, that is that is I'm 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 trying to get on the ball with all of that. That's mm -hmm. why I was like, let me get the website, let mm -hmm. me do this. I am thinking on the podcast and it's like I'm I'm thinking about it all. Like I you know, I'd said <laughs> back, I told myself you know, I think when I first I was like, oh, when I if I get to twenty thousand followers, if I get to thirty thousand followers, I'll start a podcast. And then I got to them, I'm like, damn, that happened faster than I thought. I need, like, more, I need a little bit more time. Just keep, I just keep pushing the number down. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we get. I'm like, okay, let me let me be ready. Um, so, but I do think we'll that never I'm alive. We'll never be ready. Yeah, no, just it's just whether you go you go wake up and be like fuck I don't do this. Yeah, I you you're probably right because honestly I do think I want to have my own like where I could say what I want to say. I think that's the thing I love about like Twitter and stuff. I want to say something I can make. Yeah. I either I either see that I make a video of it gotta yeah. be longer, you know. Yeah. I can say what I have to say. So I think so. I think it's coming. I I need to figure out how I blend like. Yeah, that's how, I how, love how, a, how you put it together. My love of seriousness and my love of foolishness. Like I've kind of I've kind of. Uh, Figured that out with Twitter, like I pretty, I, I give it all, I give the 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 array of things, whatever. I think I've figured out how to be my full person. Um, I'm gonna figure out how that works content wise yeah. into like what would a show or. A I know, I don't you have to be as like pretty as a studio. It can literally just be you. Do, you do daily videos. Like, yeah, you just. You know, it don't, yeah. have, it don't have to be so po uh, polished. It don't have to be polished. It just makes sure it's, co it's content, it's content, especially during the pandemic where people could do, like TikTok has made everybody a content creator, you know? That's and, true. Good and bad ways, right. but you you don't, right. it don't have to be polished. Just get the shit out there. Get it out there because clearly you got a whole movie set in there happening oh, in yeah. just season. Oh, the movie is my, my life. So just get, it, just get it out of there. Yes, I, I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> you wanted something to me. You wanted something. I can do that. <laughs> Uh, so thank you so much. I know you're on vacation, but I'm happy you, that we graced your presence. So, you're, so I hope yours got what you need to know about y'all's favorite Twitter slash IG personality. Listen, I hope I don't look like a hat mask. I hope I, hope I don't look like a Durian. Come on, you good, you good, you good, you <laughs> good. So this has been Who That 242, my first episode of the year. 
I mean, thank you so much for letting me in. And just tell people where you want them to go follow you. What do you, you want can. to know? You can follow me at Miss O'Lurin on everything. That's M S O L U R I N. That's my handle oh, everywhere. Miss O'Lurin. This has been. Who that? Who that? What? Who that? Who that? What? Who that? What? Who that? What? Who that?